third grade classroom now. And we're pleased to announce that we have special agent Ken Smith here to tell us this is a storyteller for our third grade class. Ken will be telling us a Bolivian folk tale about an armadillo who wanted nothing more in the world than to sing. Please sit still, children, and settle down while Ken tells us the story of the armadillo song. The armadillo song, Ken Smith. Thank you. I'll try that again. Yeah. Thank you, children. Thank you. You're learning well. I get to tell you today the story about, about an armadillo named Armand who wanted more than anything in his life to be able to sing. He loved music. He would go down to the pond every day where the frogs were singing and jumping around back and forth, back and forth. It was a, a beautiful ballet of motion and a cacophony of music. He loved listening to it. And he wanted more than anything at all in his heart to be able to sing as well as the frogs. Now, he didn't speak read it. And so he didn't understand when they were going, rabbit, 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 that they were laughing at him. They were saying, silly armadillo, armadillos can't sing. What a silly armadillo. So he kept coming back and listening to them and enjoying the music. Until one day when some crickets moved into the house next door. And he heard them chirping. And he loved the sound of their chirping. That was music to his ears as well. And they would chirp, 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 chirp. And he didn't understand that, that when they were going chirp, 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 they too were laughing. In cricket, in chirp, they were saying, what a silly fro uh, armadillo. Armadillos can't sing. So he just enjoyed listening to them, not being able to speak their language. So he loved the sound. And he listened to, he'd go next door and listen to him every day until one day when a man walked by carrying a cage of parakeets in it. And he heard them doing their little warbling. And he thought that was such beautiful music. And he wanted to be able to sing as well, as well as the parakeets or the crickets or the frogs. But our buddy Harmon could not sing. He learned one day that there was a program that could teach him languages. It was called Rosetta Stone. <laughs> <laughs> and they had come out with <coughs> Rivet. Chirp and warble. And so he bought those three and he would listen to them. And he finally learned the language. But he realized that just knowing the language wasn't enough. If they were, if they were going to help him learn how to sing, he would have to get to know them better. And what better place than a Toastmaster organization? <laughs> Now, this is after 1973 when Toastmasters opened up Toastmaster clubs to women, and Toastmasters International realized they were still being discriminatory. <laughs> and so they opened it up to interspecies membership as well. And Armand learned that there was a, a Toastmaster club that had frogs and crickets and parakeets in it. What a wonderful opportunity to get to know those particular singers and they could help him learn how to sing. So he went and he started attending meetings and when he did his first speech of course he told them what desire he had to learn how to sing. Now he could understand some of the sounds they made were laughter. And he was a little disappointed but he strove on and on and 
He did the sick speech, which was vocal variety. He tried singing, but it just came out snort. And he, he just was depressed, but he continued. The seventh speech was researcher topic. And he decided to research other armadillos that had learned how to sing. So he went onto the internet and he couldn't find any. No armadillos were learning how to sing. By the time he got to his tenth speech, Inspire Your Audience, he put all his heart and soul into pleading with his club members to help him find a way to learn how to sing. And one club member did tell him that maybe he should join the choir. Maybe they could help him learn how to sing. Joe's masters don't sing. So he found a choir, one that actually had frogs and crickets and parakeets in it. And he tried singing along with them, but it, he was always flat. And they finally suggested that he tried singing in armadillo, and it was just some snorting that didn't quite do it either. So he went home disappointed, and he, learned, he heard the parakeets nearby talking. And one of them said, I wonder why that armadillo doesn't go and see the great wizard. The great wizard can probably make anything happen. So Armin sought out the great wizard and finally found him and told him that he wanted more than anything in the world to learn how to sing. And the great wizard was a little amused by it. And they talked for a little while and he, he came to understand that this is really what the armadillo wanted. But he warned him that I can make you sing. But the price may be too high for you. You really need to consider it carefully. And the armadillo said, anything, any price, I'll pay anything. And the wizard said, it, the price will be your life. It will cost you your life to sing. And the armadillo didn't hesitate. I want to sing so badly, I will die if that will allow me to sing. So the wizard did his best to talk him out of it. They spoke for hours, and he could not talk him out of it. Eventually, he gave in and killed the armadillo and turned his shell into a musical instrument and gave it to the finest musician in town who played it beautifully. And one day, the musician was going by the pond and playing this mus musical instrument. And the frog said, I, I, the armadillo can sing. Hooray. And another day he went by the house that had the crickets in it. And the cricket said, I, I, the armadillo can sing, beautifully sing. We didn't believe it could happen. And finally the musician went by the parakeet's house, and the parakeets heard him play the finest music they'd ever heard, and said, I, I, the parakeet, the armadillo can sing. What a beautiful, beautiful song. So you see, the armadillo was not the first musician to give up his life or his own. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. And now let's take a moment to ask a few great comments for Ken on his speech.